Coming up on CMI, Commissioner Bud Selig has brought sweeping changes to baseball that have been a hit with owners, but have left many fans up in arms. Now, the most controversial figure in the sport sits down with Chris Myers to discuss the state of the game and his lingering image problem. What, what do you think the perception is of Bud Selig, the commissioner? Well, I haven't spent a lot of time worrying about that. Selig also reveals just how long he plans to stay on the job, explains what it's like to face angry politicians, and sets the record straight about his stance on steroids. Have we ignored it? Absolutely not. Do I believe that the current program is working? You bet I do. Find out what other ideas the commission has brewing for the grand old game. Right now on CMI, the Chris Myers interview. Hi and welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. A pleasure to have the commissioner of Major League Baseball another season in the books, Alan H. Seelig, otherwise known as Bud. Thanks for uh, for taking a moment to chat with us. Pleasure to be with you tonight, Chris. Uh, if you had to look back on the year, uh, give me a sentence or two, if you could, the, the good, the bad, and then throw something else in that stands out. Well, the good was the year. All-time attendance record in the major leagues, almost 75 million by any criteria anybody's ever used, it's stunning numbers. It was a season that when it started on April 3rd until it ended in early October, was really an exciting season. I, this, I have said that baseball has never been more popular and this year proved it. Um, the bad, not much really. Uh, we got off to a tough start in March with the steroid controversy and um, the, the congressional hearings, but I think we have worked our way through because I think people understand today that our desire, my desire, the sports desire to rid the sport of steroids is very clear and very intense. And so for the most part, I mean, it's really been a wonderful year where the focus is on the field. You know, Chris, I always say, when the focus of our sport is on the field, we're all right. When it's off the field, we have trouble. We had very little of that. But the, the steroid issue, where will that rank do you think, and I know you've been a baseball fan before you were a commissioner, in, in the history of the sport down the road, do you think it's something that will fade away? Look, when I began the sense in 98 and 99 in particular that there may be a problem, in spite of all the second guessing that's gone on that we all should have known, none of us knew, including the media, by the way. Um, I put in a minor league program, which has now completed its fifth year. We have testing for the first time, Chris. Uh, 2002 was the first year. People said it was weak. We tightened it up in January. Then Jose Canseco wrote a book, and that uh, got all uh, people all excited again. But remember, this sport had a very significant cocaine problem in the 80s, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get any drug testing program. So I'm proud of the fact that we've gotten it. Have we ignored it? Absolutely not. Do I believe that the current program is working? You bet I do. We, we've only had 11 uh, people who have tested positive, so it's clear that our program is working. But now we're working on a new program with much tougher penalties, because I believe we have to do that, um, and independent testing so there can be no equivocation about who's doing the testing. And, and then we're going to also talk about amphetamines, which have been ignored for maybe 60 or 70 years. You see so that as a, a I do, problem. I do, Chris. And I, so have we made gigantic progress in this area? We have. But we need to be very sensitive about it and, and very vigilant in, in working all of the things out as they develop new uh, technology. It develops new types of steroids and human gro growth hormones and other things. We've got to be ahead of the curve, and I can assure you that we will. Uh, you hoped for 50, 100 suspension games and then the lifetime ban. Where does that stand currently? And, and I know the union came back with something. Fans well, we're having it. very constructive conversations, but I believe that's, those are the minimums that we should have. Because I, I think, above all, I always say, Chris, you've heard me say this a lot, that baseball is a social institution with enormous social responsibilities. It is our job to make sure that not only do we clean our sport up, but make sure that kids everywhere understand how really terrible these are for your health and the fact that they won't be tolerated in sports, any sport. 
Having said that, and getting it back on the field, was there an effect on the game since the testing was was tightened up on the game that, that we saw? Well, I'll have to leave that to all of you. I, <laughs> I don't know that. You know, there obviously uh, home runs were down, but there are a lot of different uh, reasons for that. People want to say it was steroids. I, I'm not sure that's true. I think the dilution of pitching may have been the primary factor, but there's no question uh, depending on its usage, that it probably had a significant effect. We are now into very stringent, random, year-round testing. It's going to be more stringent and, and, and more on multiple occasions for the testing. So I, I, whether it changes our game or not, uh, history will tell us. All right, I want to ask you about uh, Barry Bonds, also the use of instant replay in Major League Baseball. We'll continue with Commissioner Seeley here in just a moment. Also coming up... The congressional hearing, and it seemed like it was they were tough on you. They weren't telling us something that we didn't know. They were all reacting to Jose Canseco, and I, I'm not going to comment on Jose Canseco. Why, why not? Find out next on CMI, the Chris Myers interview. Grace Myers interview. It was tough. I, I, I've talked to a lot of players, taught a lot, a lot of players who played. Hank Aaron has been a friend of mine for 50 years. We literally have grown up together. So I, I understand uh, exactly how people feel and how different generations feel. And we're talking with uh, Commissioner uh, Bud Selig, uh, and again, thanks for your time on, on this. Uh, Barry Bonds, is there a concern playing off of the steroid issue? And again, we, we don't know for sure with, with his situation. Things have been alleged that the all-time home run king would have this cloud around him if Barry indeed does break Hank Aaron's record. Well, you know, what I've said, um, Chris, and it applies to Barry and to everybody else, and you're right, nobody has been found guilty of anything yet, and I am bothered by that to some degree because I think it's been quite unfair. There's been leaked grand jury testimony, which on, of itself is, is illegal and, and uh, unethical. Uh, but I, I think this, look, we need to clean the sport up. We're doing it. We're clearly in process of doing that. Until somebody is convicted of somebody, I, I don't want to sit here and pass judgment because I, I just don't think that that's fair. So there shouldn't be any kind of asterisk o along the name of a player if, if, if he does come out and say, I use steroids. Well, I don't believe run. in asterisks anyway, and I believe, you know, we, we've been through one of those with Roger Maris right. and that, which is properly been eliminated. And I, I would say to you at this present time that uh, there, there's no evidence to do that. And, you know, people have said to me, why don't you go back and look at them? And what I've said to people in Washington, Chris, and, and, and in baseball is, look, there is no empirical data. There, 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 are, there are no testing results. There's nothing that will determine that. And I doubt very much if players, are, whoever did take it, are going to acknowledge it. So when I say to people, exactly how would you do that? And I've done this in a fair number of places. Within weeks, they'll call me and say, you know what, Commissioner, you're right. I can't. I'm not sure how we do that. And that's the whole point. One more question on, on this subject. Do you think the congressional hearing, and it seemed like it was they were tough on you, they were tough on baseball and Donald Fear, but in the end, did it give you a little more power uh, versus the players union for the good of baseball. Well, I don't look at it that way. Uh, the f March 17th was painful only because I'm there representing the sport and I understand that when you go to Washington there's a certain amount of things that go on and then you sort of have to just roll with the punches so to speak and there were a lot of punches being thrown. They weren't telling us something that we didn't know. They were all reacting to Jose Canseco and I, I'm not going to comment on Jose Canseco. Why, why not? What's, have you talked uh, to him Because I, I really, um, I'm, I'm always disappointed in human beings who do things that I, I, I just think are insensitive, and, and I'm just not going to comment on that. Right. I, and uh, so did it give me more? I don't look at it that way. I just felt after everything that went on that even though the program was working, and I keep saying this because I think it is important, and I, that's one thing that Don Fear and I do agree on, the program is clearly working. That's what led me, and I know when I left Washington, I spent the next month thinking a lot about it, and that's when I came up with the 
tougher penalties. And of course, my trips to Washington now have been, you know, uh, relatively pleasant. But, but I, I will not rest until we have those in because, Chris, in the end, um, even though the program is working, perception sometimes is more important than reality. What, what do you think the perception is of Bud Selig, the commissioner? Well, I haven't spent a lot of time worrying about that in the past. You know, in the 90s, I knew when I took over on September 9th, 1992, that we were a sport, great sport, but we were a sport that for four or five decades just hadn't done the things it should do. And uh, many other institutions had gone by us. I'm trying to be as kindly about it as I can. But I also knew because baseball is so traditional and there are the so-called traditionalists, of which I'm one of them, who would object to any change. And with that change would come a lot of pain. I knew that I didn't think it'd be as much pain as it was just the three divisions in the wild card. If you remember back to 1993, 94, it was brutal. Today, everybody loves it. Interleague play, proposed initially by Hank Greenberg and Bill Veck. In 1948 is when I first heard it. Chris, it took all these years to get it done. Revenue sharing, none existed. Today, over $300 million. You saw World Series recently completed by two teams who could not have been in the World Series eight or nine years ago. So the economic landscape of this sport has changed, plus the wild card, and plus all these other things we've talked about. So it's been the most active 13 years in baseball history. With that goes a certain amount of criticism, particularly in the 90s. Now, I must admit, the last two or three years, people have been pretty kind to me because we're setting attendance records and all these things have worked. I mean, what would we have done the last three or four years without the wild card? I keep asking myself that question. Uh, well, let me hit you with a couple if we can get some just quick responses on something like, well, we had our six different winner in the last six years, so parity, but sometimes that's not good in terms of ratings or interest. People want to see Red Sox, Yankees. What I used, when I was president of the Brewers, for years I made a speech about when April 1st, we have to provide hope and faith. Those are the two key words. At every major league meeting, that's how I start every meeting, hope and faith. And so it's my job and it's our job in baseball to make sure there's hope and faith in as many cities as possible. And if we've done that, the vibrance of the sport will be really dynamic. And I don't know if you want to call it parody. Pete Rozelle called it parody years ago, and I, you know, I'm a great admirer of Pete Rozelle's and I, but I, I don't look at that. I competitive just look, balance, I maybe. just, well, it's competitive. Yeah. I just look at it's hope and faith. And, and the more of the franchises that can, on April 1st say, we got a chance, right. then I know I've done my job well. Uh, the use of instant replay, in maybe especially in the postseason, especially after this last postseason, is it something you, you think you'd like to see or at least seriously consider? Well, no, for somebody who's made a lot of changes and gets accused both ways of making too many changes and then also being a traditionist, I, no, I don't like instant replay. Look, I, I'm a big pro football fan, but, you know, I'm sensitive to our game. The people that go to our game don't want instant replay because, you know, Chris, look, We've cut the time down to two hours and 44 minutes. We were almost over three hours. And, and while it isn't the length of the game, as, I, as I've said to RP, it's the pace of the game. But I must say to you that to use instant replay uh, would slow that process down. The umpires have done a great job. Look, we have Quest Tech today. So every ball and every strike is analyzed by people after every game. We also have more supervisors today. I think the umpires are, are well trained. We have a lot of young umpires. And the human element is there. It's been there for, for 85 or 90 years. And I know people will, uh, on this occasional dispute, which we had during the Angels with uh, Przinsky and, 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 uh, and Josh Paul, but, but, but I think that in the end, I like the sport the way it is. And I, the umpires really do a remarkable job. And so I really don't want to change it. And I was interested to say, not that I would ever base any of my decisions, but most of our fans, over 82%, do not want to see instant replay in the sport. And they are correct. All right, we'll continue uh, with the commissioner, uh, his thoughts on uh, the DH, uh, Pete Rose, and how long he wants to remain the commissioner uh, when we come back. Don't go away. Also coming up. I want to ask you about a new realignment and how far away that is, how realistic that is. It'd be all in geography. I, I love that. I, I love the idea. Plus, uh, Mark McGuire, by the way, does he, does he belong in the Hall of Fame? Find out next on CMI, the Chris Myers interview.
Coming up on the Chris Myers interview, what's the one regret of Bud Selig's reign as commissioner? I felt so badly, and I, I knew I knew we had broken a lot of hearts, including mine. Also ahead. Did you tell your wife at the time, hey, I'll just be on the job for a couple of months? I said, two to four months, don't worry, it's nothing. And she wants to know, like a lot of people, That's right. how long are you going to stay on the job? You're watching CMI, The Chris Myers Interview. My lawyers have advised me that I cannot answer these questions without jeopardizing my friends, my family, and myself. Nice to have you with us. We're continuing with uh, Commissioner Bud Selig. Uh, Mark McGuire, by the way, does he, does he belong in the Hall of Fame, in your opinion? Well, you know, I don't want to come. I like Mark McGuire a lot. I have an enormous amount of personal affection for him. I have spoken to him, and I, I have a great regard, and I'm going to let the baseball writers determine that. Uh, an old subject, but I heard Pete Rose say recently that you wouldn't take his calls or he couldn't communicate with you. Uh, though the Veterans Committee is coming up for his Hall of Fame chance possibility. Uh, can you sum that up for us? Is there any There's chance? There's been no change, Chris. I, 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 I haven't heard from Pete. I, okay. I did read the same thing, but uh, I haven't heard from his representative, maybe talking to Bob Dupay, who's president of Major League Baseball. And, and I, you know, I've met with Pete, and I said that I review it. Because Even if he's come out later and said he admitted his wrongdoing, you still yeah, but change? No, no, nothing has changed in terms that I'll continue to review and think about it, but, but I really have no further comment. Okay, so the chances are not good for his hope of... I'll let others make that <laughs> Get a, uh The designated hitter, really you have the only sport, Commissioner, that has kind of a rule that's different for one league than another. Well, that's interesting. You know, I w I'm the one person left that in December of 1972 at the Plaza Hotel in New York, I voted for it. All the years that I ran a team in American League, I got to like the rule, as the American League clubs do today. The National League clubs, of course, hate the rule, and they'll never do But how about just making it uniform? What I would say to you, because the American League clubs like it, Chris, is it's going to take what I so, uh, assume to be some cataclysmic event. What do I mean by that? Geographical realignment. When we considered geographical realignment in 1997, I had a fair amount of American League clubs who desperately wanted that say, well, if you can get them to go for that, them being the National League, uh, we, we'll think about the DH and, and so on. So I think a geographical realignment is down the road for me, but I still am a great believer in it. And every time you watch all the interleague play games, you can understand why. Yeah, and I want to ask you about a new realignment and how far away that is, how realistic that is. Well, it isn't on the drawing board right at the moment. I tried it eight years ago. And is it, what, four divisions? Is it more geographical? Yeah, well, it'd be, it'd be all in geography. I, I love that. I, I love yeah. the idea. The I NFL mean, I, did good with that. I, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, uh, I, I use that with the clubs. And when you watch these wonderful rivalries that take place, not only the, the in, what I call the interurban rivalries, the Mets and the Yankees and the Dodgers and the Angels and on and on and on. There's a lot of those now. But even take a club like Cleveland. Now Cincinnati wants to play them. Pittsburgh wants to play them. We've gotten it. Boston have and Philadelphia have. Now you're going to have Washington and Baltimore. There's so many of them that you would finally say to yourself, well, why shouldn't we do that? These, these are, they're so intense and they're so good that we need to think about it. More playoff teams, would that be a possibility? I know people were critical of the wild card, but as you pointed out, since it's been oh, very it's a, successful. We're up over 94% now right. of our fans. I mean, you, so, you do ask yourself, Chris, don't you, where, where would we, we be before? without it? That's right. So um, would, would that work with, with a new real? Well, I'll give you a quick answer. I wouldn't say no <clears throat> to you relative to two more teams. But I'm not quite willing to go there yet because I, I, this system is working so well that the more we did with the two additional teams, I, I'm not sure it did what a lot of people think it would. All right, so you took over in 92 uh, as commissioner. We know that you were an owner and a, and a car salesman before that. Uh, which, by the way, all three of those jobs, i got to tell you, there's not a lot of real upside, right? Because there's always, there's always somebody going to be mad at you. That's one exactly way or another, right. right? And, and which of those is more and difficult? you learned that quickly, too, <laughs> believe me. Uh, so, if, and did you tell your wife at the time, hey, I'll just be on the job for a couple of months? Yes, here. I did. We got off the plane. Robin Yelp was going for his 3,000th hit that night, and the meetings were in St. Louis. And this is where they're in. And we got off the plane. And she was waiting for me. She said, what does this mean? Because I hadn't had the courage to call her and tell her. And I said, two to four months, don't worry, it's nothing. Well, here we are 13 years later. 
And I, you know, I, and she's I'm, still with us too, by the way. That's right. <laughs> it's is, it's exactly right. And yeah, she no. wants to know, like a lot of people, that's right. How long are you going to stay on the job? Till uh, December of two thousand, December thirty first, two thousand nine. That's my contract was extended then, and I, I agreed to do that because everybody wanted stability. We we have really made so many inroads in so many areas, but there's work to be done yet. So, at that time, I'll be 75, and I'm telling you right now, Chris, that will be it. There's so, no no second. No, I want to do a lot of other things in life, and I hope I'll be healthy enough at that time to do them. So, your would your greatest regret be in your run as commissioner? Would it be that '94 No World Series year? Yes. That's probably the, yes. the, the really lowest. painful. You know, I remember the night that um, we announced it, and I replayed every World Series that I can remember, starting in 1944. And I didn't miss one. And I, the, the closer I got, Chris, to to that year, I, I felt so badly. And I, I knew I knew we had broken a lot of hearts, including mine. But I guess what I said to myself then, and in retrospect, I would say to you now, as painful and terrible it was, and it should have been avoided. And I, I you know, I, I wish that we could have avoided it. We've made so much progress. There is parity. The game's more popular than ever. And we corrected the problems that probably should have been corrected three and four decades before. And so... So well, along those lines, what are you... We talked about some of those things. What are you most proud of? And I know you have more that you want to do, but what do you really feel good I, I about? I think changing the economic landscape, which produced, you Young. will call it parity, but I'll call it hope and faith or competitive balance. Okay. Because for three decades before, Chris, the clubs had fought with each other divided by big markets, small, medium. They had fought with commissioners. They had fought with the union. You'll note with great interest the last seven or eight years, clubs no longer fight with each other, publicly or privately. If there's, they have to go through me, but they don't. So all that has stopped, and as a result of that, we constructively have moved this sport forward. And I'm proud to, to tell you, I believe this sport's more popular today than ever before. Well, in closing, and, and I'd like to ask, you know, fans see a commissioner, he's in a coat and tie, and, and they, they don't agree with some decisions that we've talked about. Right. I mean, I've known you for years, I know where your heart is in baseball and that you're a fan, but what, what should they know uh, about Bud Selig, the commissioner of, of baseball, that maybe they don't know? You know, I love the sport, it's been my life. Um, I have a great passion. I have a great respect for it. I have great respect for its history and its tradition. And any decision, whether people agree or disagree, they can be assured of one thing. I'll always try to make it in what's in the best interest of the sport. And as a result, you know, I think that the sport itself, we've eliminated a lot of the things that have gone on. And so, obviously, anybody who knows me knows my passion and for for what I b believe undoubtedly is the greatest game in the world. All right, well, I appreciate your time and, and candor as always, and thanks very much. Pleasure thank to be you. with you, Chris. Appreciate uh, Bud Selig with us here on CMI, and we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.